Hey guys, welcome to Troy Time. Hey, check it out. Today, we are going to talk about low power devices, okay? I'm gonna tell you how to make basically what I call a super iPod, which is a standalone file player from an old uh, cell phone. Okay. It's only going to cost five or six bucks to get you up and going. Okay, It's going to have an FM radio. It's going to play local files, audio files, video files, movies, uh, TV show files. And it's also going to have a ton of games, Okay, uh, retro emulators, Nintendo games, things like that. So it's going to be super awesome. It's going to be great to have on hand. And uh, we're going to show you how to make it coming up next. Okay, before we get started, some of you will say, why would I want a device like that? I already have a phone, okay? So let's just go over that, those uh, reasons now, all right? First one is you always want a backup, okay? That should be obvious, okay? Your phone at any time could get broken, could get lost, could get stolen. It could just die, right? It could be the victim of, uh, you know, a, um, a cyber attack, right? It could brick it, and then you'd be left with nothing. So you do want to have a backup for just tons of reasons. That should be fairly obvious, right? Secondly, this phone, one thing, has a local uh, FM radio. So especially for emergencies, that's awesome. So you've got your emergency radio kind of covered, right? Thirdly, this, uh, what I'm going to show you, uh, this phone is incredibly low powered, okay? Awesome, ultra low power device, all right? It's going to take one quarter of a watt when you're listening to the radio or listening to audio files, okay, MP3s. One quarter of a watt. That means a USB battery that holds 36 watts will power it for... 144 hours okay so that that's amazing when it's playing the radio or playing music um and it takes about one watt when you're playing video so a usb battery will uh allow it to play video or video games for about 36 hours so it's amazing it's incredibly low power super efficient okay probably four to five times uh less power that this thing draws rather than than your uh, your current cell phone so definitely a great reason to have this on hand so tons of reasons you want that uh, another reason you don't want to, as you're piling media into this thing, you don't want to bog down your current phone with all kinds of data and all that. You want something separate. Uh, number two, you don't, you'll don't. you be putting some older files on this thing, and you don't want all those old files on the phone where you're doing you know, all your banking and all that kind of stuff. So you want it separate, just a standalone thing that's never going to connect to the net. And then lastly, you don't want to have to worry about, well, I just op moved up in my operating system from whatever it was, you know, uh, uh, 11 to 12 or 12 to 13 and then I lose all these programs. So you don't want to have to lose programs as you go. You just want something that's going to be standalone that's just going to work. It's not going to connect to the internet or anything. It's just going to be an awesome standalone device. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do it and uh, those are the details coming right up. All right, guys. So today what we're going to focus on is this guy right here. Okay, this is the Motorola Droid X2. Okay, you're going to see that we do similar things or similar end product for other things like this phone here. This is a uh, Hawaii Glory. It's the H868. Uh, we're going to do the similar sort of thing with this. He's slightly different in, in the way we do it. We're going to do this with uh, Fire tablets as well. All of them will have certain pros and cons. Okay, each one will have certain benefits and certain things. Uh, certain limitations but for today we're going to focus on this one but we'll do other videos on some of those stuff so those are going to be options as well we'll also do it for um uh newer android cell phones android's a way to go apple locks everything down and makes it real hard to do we'll have a few little tiny hacks i guess you could say for apple stuff but generally we're looking at android devices android phones fire tablets things like that that's where you can really take advantage of their openness and really uh, use them in tons of different ways okay but for today boom motorola droid x2 that's the one we're looking at Okay guys, so if I didn't mention it, so I picked this thing up, I picked up several, and I usually get them for five or six dollars, okay? You can get them off eBay, you can get them used. We're not going to activate the service, there's no other charges or anything like that. We are gonna usually do about a three dollar little hack to it, okay? And that's to take care of the battery issue. So the biggest problem with these, like I said, usually get these online, the seller I normally go through is, it's you sell to us. Uh, capital U and then sell is in like cell phone. So it's U-C-E-L-L, -L, the number two U-S, okay? And uh, I've bought a dozen or more of these things from him and usually right around the $5, right? $5.50, 6 6 right in there, okay? But there's other sellers, okay? I wouldn't pay more than 10 bucks for these because if you get into the 10 to 20, I would just use that to buy other devices like a Fire Tablet or a Projector or things like that. Try to stay, you know, what you're comfortable with. Usually under $10, I usually get them for five or $6. Okay, but here's the deal. Normally they come like this. Okay, no back shell and no battery. Okay, the problem with these old cell phones is the battery. The battery has died on a lot of them, and you may have a battery with it that's really crappy, right? That kind of thing. Um, so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little hack so that we don't have to worry about the battery. Okay, so that's what's coming up next. 
Okay guys, to take care of the battery issue here, we're just gonna use a cable like this, okay? We've used it in other videos. This is a USB to alligator clip um, uh, cable, okay? You can get them online, uh, you can get them on eBay and on Amazon. Um, usually I think they run about $4 for one. I got a three pack for like $7 or $7.50, something like that. I recommend getting three because you're gonna use them all the time. I use them, in my other video, I use them to jumper around any battery powered device. If it's got two, three or four batteries, you can use this and then you don't need batteries anymore. You can just power them with a USB device, okay? But you can check that video out, it's awesome. We do all kinds of stuff with that. And you can use it in, in other ways as well that we've shown in other videos. Anyways, USB to alligator clip. That's the cable we're gonna use, okay? So, what you would do is you see that there's these four little prongs here, okay? I'll try and get it zoomed in on camera, okay? So look at, you can look at your battery and you can tell that there's a plus. A plus is red and a minus is um, black, right? But if this one didn't come with a battery, yours might have, right? But if it didn't, then just, we're gonna connect the black one here on the left, as the phone sits just like this, face down, upright, the inward, inboard one, or the left one, if you want to say that, the, the two ends are what you're going to use. The left one here and the most right one there, okay? The leftward most one, we're going to connect our black alligator to, and the rightward most one, we're going to connect our red alligator to. For today, I'm just using this USB power supply because it's what I had down here on the table. I'm just going to turn it on, and we're going to stick the USB port right into one of these guys here. Okay, the beauty of this is if you didn't get it right, you can hook up the, the leads first before you plug it in. That's another option. But if you don't get it right, your device will beep or whatever. No worries. If you short these together, right, your device will shut off. No big deal. You've got a, a reset function on every USB battery that you use. But we're going to turn this on. We're going to put this prong here on our leftwardmost one. <laughs> and we're going to put this prong here on our whiteboard must one, okay? And then we're just going to flip this around. Now when we start up the phone, look at that, okay? So we have successfully jumpered uh, that battery by using this cable, okay? So it works out great. So now you've got three options, okay? You can just do this anytime you want to use it, which can be a little bit of a pain, right? or you can fasten that cable to those prongs, okay? Now, I am a solder qualified person, right? <laughs> uh, my professional skill set actually is in electronics and in improvising things in the field, okay? So uh, I could solder this, but I feel like if I go through and solder this, I could solder it and I could get it. I do have back panels for these and I could grind out the back panel and make it nice and neat and everything. But I feel like I would lose a lot of people in the DIY process because as soon as people see the solder, they'll be like, okay, I'm not doing that, right? So what I would prefer to do instead, what I would prefer to do instead is just hot glue them, okay? I know it sounds silly, but it works, right? So um, I, it's just like when I watch DIY stuff, I watch DIY stuff on different stoves and things like that, and I'm all for it. And then the guy breaks out the welder and I'm like, oh crap. Well, I'm not gonna do that DIY because I don't weld, right? So I don't want you to have that same experience. So I wanna keep it simple for everyone. So I would recommend just chart powering this thing up and while it's actually on there and while it's actually on so that you know it's all connected right and everything, then I would just hot glue this nicely and you can fill this whole area with it, right? This area here between my fingers, let me zoom in closer, that's your SD card. So you need to leave that open, okay? So I will show you some pics, okay? Because I've already done this on several, several other ones. I'll show you a pic of me hot gluing it where it's nice and ugly with the hot glue. <laughs> and then I'll show you a picture, a picture of just covering up with tape, okay? This isn't uh, a beauty contest. We're not gonna pull this phone out to impress the chicks, right? This is something we're gonna be using in an emergency when power's out, when the uh, internet is out, and we're gonna have loads of media and entertainment available to us, okay? So I'll show you those pics. So coming up right here, I'll stick a pic where I've actually done this same thing and hot glued it down. And coming up right here, I'll show you a pic where I've actually just taped over it just for appearance reasons and to cover it. And I've left that little area open for the SD card. Okay, so this phone here is now up and working, okay? 
Now, your phone might not uh, come to this stage, okay? The, your phone might need a hardware reset first. It, it might not have ever been activated, or you may just wanna do a hardware reset to get rid of any of the old user's info and all that stuff on there, okay? So your phone might actually come to like a lock screen, okay? So this one doesn't have that, so what I'll do is I'll post a video, a link uh, in the description, and that'll walk through how to, what's called bypass activation. So the main software you're gonna to wanna to use for this phone as a file player is what's called VLC player, okay? It does have a player, a file player resonant in the phone, but it's a very old one and it's not very powerful, okay? Anyone that's played with computers or is kind of techie will tell you VLC is the best thing out there. It plays every single file type, super powerful. It's got all sorts, it's easy to use, but it's very powerful. You go into the advanced menu, you can do things like sync up the audio if the audio is off with the video and all, kind, all kinds of stuff, okay? I'm just talking while this is booting up. There we go. Okay, so as we get into this guy now, um, I'll show you here. VLC looks like this, okay? This is your VLC app. It looks like that with the little orange pylon, okay? Now, for an old phone like this, the version that you're going to want of VLC is 1.73, okay? So all you have to do is just go, you, you have to sideload it, which means you have to put it on a, an SD card and or plug in a, a USB cable to the phone, but it's most easy to put it on an SD card and then slide the SD card in there and then uh, run the executable file using the phone, okay? So um, the file that you want is VLC 1.7.3. So if you just type in like Google and you type in download um, VLC, 1.7.3 it'll take you to that to that page i'll leave a couple links uh, in the description as well and then it'll be executable files for android phones are dot apk okay it's going to be a dot apk so you just drag and drop that to an sd card and stick that sd card in here and then uh, uh, search out that file and then execute it and it will load the vlc app okay vlc app super easy to use it can automatically search your file library or you can just uh, go one file at a time and, and play files all day long. Any file types, uh, .movs, .jpeg, .mp4s, .mp3s, all kinds of .mlvs. Any file type, any media file type, it's going to play it, okay? It's a, the best player out there. So I recommend you load that player in there and uh, yeah. That's pretty much going to get you to a point where this is a standalone file player with an FM radio, okay? I'm going to do another video soon, and we'll talk about what uh, apps you want to load to make it a awesome gaming station as well. Okay, guys. So here is the uh, place, one place where you can download this uh, VLC 1.73. That is the actual address up top. Okay guys, so let's talk about particulars of this phone just for a moment. So as we already discussed, this phone's awesome for being low power, okay? But unfortunately, since it's so old, it no longer really communicates with the internet well, which is fine because we're gonna use it for a standalone item. But that means that, um, you know, your streaming stuff's not gonna work well on here or anything like that. Other devices that we use, like your tablets and your newest, newer phones, you could do streaming stuff. But the point of this one is kind of like the internet's down. This is what you want when the internet's down, local files, right? Uh, the other thing is this, um, when you do use the radio on this, you do need to have something plugged into the uh, to the headphone port here, okay? So headphones uh, will work just fine, or you can have an actual uh, aux cable coming out to an external speaker, okay? So in order to use the radio, just for the radio, if you're playing music, you can do that over Bluetooth, right? But the radio needs to use that. It uses that for an antenna, okay? So bear that in mind. Um, when it comes to the actual files themselves, okay? So lots of different things you can do, okay? If you have an old collection, uh, like I do, you know, of DVDs and that kind of thing, um, there are files that can burn off your DVDs into, into they, it's called encoding. You can encode your uh, DVDs digitally, right? Or even VHS for that matter. Um, and uh, uh, those things, if you do do that, if you do decide to do that for to build your library, 
um, I recommend doing a very, very small uh, resolution, like 240 to 320. That's like a tiny, tiny, because it's going to be on a very small screen. So you, you don't need these huge one gigabyte file sizes. Uh, like a half hour show should be like maybe 30 to 50 uh, megabytes. Okay. So very, very small files, very, very small video resolution, because you're going to be playing them on a phone. So you don't need the huge ones, right? Um, so if you're encoding, you're looking for the smaller resolutions at max 640 to uh, uh 480, but that's overkill. That's way overkill. 320, 240 should work fine if you're doing the encoding. Um, more than likely, though, you'll probably just download files off the uh, the internet. Um, yeah, a lot of people are going to choose to go online and download stuff. Um, yeah, I can't walk you through that uh, for different reasons. One, because the sites are always changing, you know, who's got what and where, and if it works. And two, because there's different legal things that, uh, you know, I can't address for everyone. So, so I'm not even going to attempt to do that. Um, but yeah, but if you if you do whatever files you put on there, or even if you decide not to put any files on there, the uh, the just having the radio and just having the phone uh, are are super huge advantages. Uh, should power go out and the internet go out, and having that radio that can play with low power for so long is, is super helpful. So yeah, and if you do decide to get uh, videos, download that uh, that VLC app, and it's going to play just every single file format that's out there. Okay, and I'll put those links in the description. Uh, we're going to do this in very amounts of details for other devices as well because other devices can do more things, uh, interface with um, Bluetooth controllers and lots of different things, right? So, but there's more to come. Uh, next video, we're going to talk about how to load retro emulators on that phone and on this phone. And they're going to work out awesome, okay? We're going to load basically uh, uh, DS, I'm sorry, Nintendo emulators for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, Nintendo 64, and... Um, Game Boy, right? On this one right here. So good stuff coming up. We'll do that next video for this guy. Hopefully we'll see you there. This is Troy time. I'm out.